hello guys welcome back to my channel in this particular video i'm going to carefully teach us how to make a 360 flare for a peplum blouse you can also use it to make a flare for any other thing you want to make so guys make sure you watch video to the end and make sure you click on the like button make sure you subscribe if you are new to this channel thanks and may god bless you make sure you watch to the end so after we are done um, cutting out the upper bodies next thing we need to do is to cut out the flare the peplum I have many videos here of peplum flame 360, but I will still use this same opportunity to teach us how to make a 360 peplum for this blouse especially. So um, before you make a any dress, you guys normally know what we do. I tell you how you fold your fabric. Do you understand? That's the first thing we do. I tell you how to fold your fabric. So for the sake of this particular tutorial, how you fold your fabric, there is a formula for folding of your fabric. Do you understand? And that formula is um the flay length plus the radius will give you what you use and fold your fabric do you understand the flay length like the length of the flay you want to put on your dress and plus the radius now what is the radius i know most of you don't know radius radius is what we usually use in getting our flays let's say example have you noticed when you want to do a flay you usually see something like this before you now measure and get another one like this are you seeing so the distance from here to this one is what we call the radius. Do you understand? So we need the radius and we need the flay length. Are you seeing it? The radius plus the flay length will give you what you use and the oh. cut the whole flay. Okay. Now, is the radius given to us? No. So how can you get the radius when you are working? Now, look at the radius formula. How you get the radius is the place you are going to fix the flay. Hmm? Let's say in this case, the place we are going to place the flay is 35 inches. That is the under bust and the half length. It's 35 inches. Add extra 4 inches to it. What is that 4 inches? 4 inches is the zipper allowance of the left side of the back and then the right side of the back, which is 2 2. Are you seeing it? 35 plus 4 is how many? 39. So you have to divide it with how many? 6.25. Please, I want you to know that this 6.25 is what? Constant. 6.28. Are you seeing it? This 6.28, it is constant. Are you seeing it? Whenever you want to divide for 360, use it. So, 39 divided by 6.28, which is constant, will give us around 6.21 and the above. Do you understand? That is what it's going to give us. If you like, you can approximate it to 6 inches, at least for the um, time being. Do you understand? Okay, now we have gotten the radius. What of the flay length have we gotten it? Probably you have not gotten it. So how do you get it if you have not gotten it? You already have your blouse length. Hmm? In this case, the blouse length is 25. And you have your half length where you're going to fix this um, flay. Now, 25 minus the half length, that is the blouse length minus the half length, that is 25 minus 18, is going to give you 7 inches. You guys already know that most cases we add extra allowance for the length. Now, the allowance is extra 2 inches. That will give you a total of 9 inches. Are you seeing it? So, the radius is 6.21. I can approximate it to be 6. Then, why the um, flay length is 9? Remember I said, for you to fold... See, that's why most people don't know. Calculation is very necessary. Why are we doing all these things? It's because we don't want to fold in a way that we fold and at the end of the day, when you finish cutting the flay, you, you, you waste your material. That's why you need to know this calculation. So now, for you to fold, I said it's flay length plus radius. We already have all of them. So the flay length, which is 9 plus 6.21, do you understand? We give you 15 points. Do you understand? So in a situation remember you choose to approximate it to 15. Are you seeing? What does that mean? How do you fold your material? Look at it. What it means is that you should make sure that... Now, look at it. Whenever you're making 360 flay, you have to fold your material into 4. Now, see what it means. It means that if you measure here, it should not be anything lesser than 15. If you measure here, it should not be anything lesser than 15. So look at it. Are you seeing it? What it means is that if you have your fabric like this, look at it. Look at what it means. If you have your fabric like this, you should measure something from 15 and above from here. Are you seeing it? Fold it first. Hmm? And also, as you are measuring from here, 15 and above, please, remember here it's going to be folded into two. Make sure here, times 2 of 15, which is 30, it should not be lesser than 30. Are you seeing it? Okay. Fold it in order to get the same thing. Are you seeing it? When you have gotten the same thing, fold it again. That is what we mean by folding into 4. Are you seeing it? Now we have folded it, and if you check it very, very well, you notice that you notice that this side is up to 15, while this side is up to 15. So it's more like a square. Do you understand? Okay. So, 
let's use it and cut since we have folded. Are you seeing it? Okay, is it clear on how to fold it? Okay, so make sure you arrange this thing very well so as not to start cutting like this. Okay, so now you are done. Next thing we are going to be doing now is we are going to be working with the radius. <coughs> Do you understand? I've already shown us what we mean by radius. Yes. Okay, so now what is the radius we are working with? Six inches. Do you understand? Okay. Now, mark out. Please, I will advise you, if you can use the 6.21 exactly, you use it. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. But if you cannot use it, you want to approximate it, it's still very much. Okay, because we are going to go ahead to cross-check it. Now, look at it. Six inches. So, start from the peak here. Are you seeing it? Mark out six inches. Are you seeing it? Start from here. Mark oh. out how many? Six inches. Start from here. Mark out how many? Six, six inches. Then, start from here mark out how many systems so this is what you are going to do like as if you are driving okay at the end of the day you get this are you seeing it now take your chalk and they connect okay are you seeing it take your chalk and do what connect okay so in order for us to cross check it before we get the fillet length you have to first of all cross check so how do you cross check for you to cross check, you have to divide your circumference where they are going to fix it, which is how many? 39. Remember, we did 35 plus extra 4. That is 39. Divide it by 4. What do you get? So 39 divided by 4. That is for cross checking, guys. Do you understand? So 9 3 quarter. Measure it like this. This is how you have to make sure that this thing is up to 9 3 quarter. Are you seeing it? This is how you measure it. Put your tape like this. Are you seeing it? Make sure it's up to how many? Nine three quarter. Is it up to nine three quarter? Yeah? It is not up to nine three quarter. Hmm? It's not even up to nine and a half. What we have here is more like nine one quarter. Are you seeing it? Let's measure it again to see whether it's up to nine three quarter. So that means we need extra half. Are you seeing it? Now, do you know why we need extra half? Do you know what? Because we did not use the exact 6.21. Okay. But I purposely did it so as to show us how to you know adjust now it is not enough and you really want to get it what we have here is 9.25 why we need 9.75 now what do you do you go down are you seeing it you can go down with extra half inch or quarter inch depending on whatever thing you feel like you need to use at that moment okay now look at it guys let me go down with extra half inch are you seeing it let me go down with extra half inch. that is what you are going to do anytime you want to increase this point do you understand if you want to increase it you go down like this okay okay now let's check it again nine three quarter is it up to nine three quarter it is up to nine three quarter do you understand so this is how you work on it now in a situation whereby what you got is uh more you want to reduce it just do the opposite of what you've just done now. If you want to reduce it, make sure you do what? Come up with half. Then in a situation where you have not gotten it, this is just what you'll be doing to you get it correct. Do you understand? So now, see our original point now. You've seen it. So next thing I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be putting the flay length. So the flay length is how many? Nine. Nine. Nine inches. Okay? So let's impute our measurements. So when you are done putting your flay length, next thing you need to do is to connect. After you are done connecting, the final thing you need to do is to cut it off. Do you understand? So that is really hard to do it. So now let's cut it off. So as you can see, we are done. So next thing we're going to be doing now is take the one you just cut out, use it and cut out the material. So next thing I've been doing now is to teach you how to sew it. We are going to learn how to couple it. Please make sure you like this video. 
so guys after we are done cutting next thing we are going to do is to place the material and the lining together place it front to front so if by me looking at this one you notice that we have a crino line so for those that want to put a crino line make sure you do it on the lining as we have just done it now okay guys i want to show you something as you can see we are working with a hemming gum now the reason for this is for those that when they finish sewing their purple on the lining will be coming out from the inside so the hemming gum helps you hold it firm when you iron it so guys make sure you sew half inch all through make sure you sew half inch all through as you guys can see make sure you place your lining on the material very well pin it before you start sewing so that one won't be longer than the other do you guys understand okay so that is what we are going to do now so you guys can see we are done the next thing we are going to be doing we are going to be top stitching hope you guys know that when you are top stitching you top stitch on the lining not on the fabric now let's stop stitch now by men looking at this look at what i'm about to show you guys look at it the allowance are you seeing the same allowance is going to be re relaxing on the lining as you are stitching it okay so place it stitch with like um quarter inch that is what we are going to be stitching with okay guys so let's do the stitching right now um please if you have not subscribed make sure you subscribe to my channel and if you've not liked this video make sure you support us by liking this video it's very very important we are taking our time to do all this video for you so i wish you support me you support this company by just clicking on the like button so as you guys can see we are still doing the top stitching here so when we are done doing this top stitching i'm going to show you guys the next step okay so let's do that So as you guys can see, we actually done top stitching. Yes, we are done top stitching. So I want you guys to have patience so that you will see what we're about to do next. So make sure you turn it. Now, if you look at it very well, you'll notice that we've not um, cut it with scissors, like we've not divided it into two. Like I said, we are going to be using it for a peplum top. So place it and make sure that, look at that base part, make sure that it is facing the lining. Are you seeing it? The seam allowance is facing the lining. Okay, now sew, uh, sew it out like this. Are you seeing it? Okay, we are going to stitch again on the other side. Look at it. Just give a gap of like quarter inch, stitch again. Now, the essence of this is just to divide it you guys are going to see what we are going to do so what i'm trying to tell us is that you must not take your scissors and divide before you so you can divide after sewing now look at it guys take your scissors and they successfully divide it so after we are done dividing it as you guys can see it is almost ready for you to fix it on your peplum top so next thing we have to do is to carefully turn it over just take your time Carefully turn it over and make sure you use scissors to put on all edges. Okay, as you turn it over, you are seeing what we are having here. Okay, the material is coming over to the lining a little bit. So now, as you are ironing, make sure the material is coming over to the lining a little bit. Are you seeing it? Okay, now remember as we are ironing it now, remember as we are ironing it now, the hemming gum we used to sew at the edge of the um, peplon is actually working it will make the peplon to uh, you know be very very firm at the base part now look at what i'm about doing now as i'm still ironing i'm still going to use hemming gum and put at the edge that is where we are going to be fixing it on the waist of our dress yes i'm going to be fixing it there so as to hold it firm also then when we are done doing that next thing we are going to do guys is to go to our overlocking machine and overlock what i mean by overlocking machine is the weaving machine we should go there and they weave it out so that is actually how to uh, make a peplum for a blouse or anything else you want so guys thank you for watching i want you to make sure you subscribe to my channel make sure you click on the like button i love you guys all make sure you support me